So I'm the innovation uh, director, but I also handle the customer support and fan area, which is basically everything related with the people. You can come and discuss with uh, a front office. We've got a front office. Of course, we try to do this, not the regular style of just picking up the phone, but trying to be more proactive. We are more data-driven front office, data-driven help desk and so on. Uh, I also manage the um, everything related to ticketing in the stadium. So all the tickets, uh, all the season ticket holders, all the regular tickets away at home and so on. Um, handicap tickets, every single type of tickets. Um, and then I also manage the digital side of the company, which is everything related to the app, the web, um, all the digital assets that we've got, digital marketing, of course, and then, of course, um, uh, innovation, which is a bit of, of everything, uh, what we discussed before, and then also innovation in, in other parts of the company. So there's, there's a couple of vertical uh, roles, I'd say, and then there's also a couple of more horizontal things, like, like, again, innovation is something that is horizontal for all the company. Also, digital is kind of horizontal. Ticketing is really vertical and customer support is really vertical. So, so there's a mix of a um, combination of, of, of roles that help me um, discuss and be in and have a lot of interactions with many people and departments inside the club. So innovation, I think it's, it's not only tech. Sometimes people, when they speak about innovation, they speak about and they think only digital. And it doesn't have to be a huge 3D hologram or so on. That doesn't necessarily have to be innovation. There's innovative things that you can do that are really, really small or that could change the way of doing stuff that could be just as good as any big innovation. Just so that you know, a simple example. For example, we played uh, two years ago Barcelona in the final de Copa del Rey. We played the Copa del Rey final in 2019. That's two seasons away. And in the past, for example, we used to have, so we had 20,000 tickets, and but we have 40,000 season ticket holders. So we had to decide how are we going to give those tickets to 40,000 season ticket holders. Usually in the past, they were like uh, ballots or, or raffles. So we had to randomly give them away. But in this case, we try and do something more organized. So we try and look at criteria that define uh, conditions based on the merits of the people to attend the game. So we looked at a criteria which was uh, they had attended at least 80% of the games. And we also looked at another criteria that say people were at least four years season ticket holders. So they were loyal to us. So based on those criteria, we started looking at what were the exact um, dates that we could get. And we managed to get around 20,000 people that, uh, that met those two criteria. So we hand them the tickets and we gave them the opportunity to buy the tickets before anyone else. So instead of randomly selecting the people, we, we uh, somehow rewarded the people based on their own merits. This might not seem really innovative because that's something that makes total sense once it explained. But because of that, the season after, we managed to get the season ticket holder attendance from 80% average to 87% average because the people were educated and they learned that, oh, I should go to the stadium because maybe at some point if we play a final or maybe if they give away a reduced number of t-shirts, uh, they will look at this type of numbers. So again, this is really, really simple example of how being innovative in the, in the way of thinking might change many things. And there was no technology beside that. It was just common sense and a different way of doing stuff. We have been working with a company and uh, in the near future, we will be able to know the, the probability uh, for a season ticket holder to attend the match. So instead of knowing around how many people are going to attend next match, I'm going to know with a certain degree of probability if you are going to attend next match or not. This is helpful because it uh, helps us understand what are your patterns of behavior and see uh, maybe you don't like going to the matches if it's a Saturday. In that case, if we play a Saturday game, of course, we cannot influence La Liga to change us, uh, the, the fixtures or the day that we play, but we could somehow um, uh, we, we could somehow contact you, send a mail, uh, a notification, a push notification to let you know, hey, uh, we know it's Saturday, the game, 
how about you share your season ticket your season ticket with a friend or you might want to resell your season ticket so we might be proactive by letting you know that we care about you we want you to come to the game but in case you don't want to come to the game or you can't come to the game because saturdays you usually don't come to the games you have these possibilities to share the the experience or to resale or so on and also the other way around if we have a high degree of probability that you should come to the game and you don't come to the game we want to understand why what has happened what has changed no so so this again is a perfect example of how we care about the people uh, putting the people in the middle and caring about them imagine your club calling you on a monday saying why didn't you came to the football stadium to the football game uh, and then you say, oh, that's nice. Thanks for caring. Maybe we don't do that every sing after every single game. Maybe we do that once you miss two games or three games in a row because maybe you're sick. Perhaps now is a, uh, um, unfortunately, that's a common situation now that you might go sick and you might have COVID or so, or so on. So we, it's nice for the club to care about the people. And we have the tools, which is basically, a, a, it's not, it's not, something difficult that we need to put 1000 people calling everyone and understanding did you came to the game or not we have that information so why not use it to make it better for the people it's a great opportunity for valencia to innovate in those single and specific technologies that we cannot reach we are a football club so we are now experts on uh, artificial intelligence for example or augmented reality mobility payments nfc 5g so if we want to get to all those places, we should not be doing all those things in-house. So why not look for the most um, uh, fierce uh, startups that are very good on those uh, on, on those technologies and trying to bring them to this uh, innovation hub? And that's basically what we did with, with Startup Valencia. So they are experts creating this type of programs. Of course, we haven't created before um, an accelerator or an incubator, or however you, you want to call it. So they are helping us define the rules and the condition for the startups to participate. Uh, we wanted to have this program ready and we are working closely with them to not only have a physical space in Mestalla so that you can co-work from there if you have a startup or have your meetings there with investors and so on, but they're also helping us create this program and the conditions. We want to have this by the end of the season, but I have to be honest, it, it has had such an impact on uh, football world and the city that there's already around 10 startups participating without us even having the program ready. So we had to create something ad hoc for every single one of them because they were faster than us creating the program. But uh, at some point we will launch the program in by the end of the season, there will be clear rules of, of participation. I mean, this is what we are trying to find. And uh, basically we have decided that we want to to, to look for startups in these four innovation verticals. First one of them being uh, medical. Uh, so medical innovation means everything related with injury prevention, uh, gym exercises, new types of treatments. As you see, there's no technology here. It's basically medicine. Uh, it's yeah. really being innovative in medicine, even psychology, even nutrition fits here. So everything related to that, that's uh medical innovation then we want to have academy innovation which is basically everything related with the young talents that we have in in valencia which now we have a, a lot of them playing for the first team uh like um sports performance sports science scouting uh knowing more your people knowing knowing more the needs of every single um every single player they don't have the same needs even though they might play for the same team even e-learning fits in here. Also, we have to educate the people. It's not only about them playing football, but it's, we need to, to make them better people at the end. Uh, so those are the two first verticals. And then we have smart stadium, which is the third vertical, which is related everything with the stadium, the match day experience. Like we said, 5G, NFC, uh, ticketless payments, uh, ticketless, uh, cashless payments also sustainability also mobility for example in mobility uh valencia and mestalla is uh the place where most people come and go at the end of the year in the city so around two million people come and go at this specific place at some point during the city so we signed last week hyperloop you know hyperloop there's uh yeah. the tube transportation that's kind of crazy and futuristic but there's a valencia there's a valencia startup that works 
and has won a lot of prizes in Elon Musk competition. Mm -hmm. And we decided to sign with them to start studying what are the possibilities. Of course, that's a, that's a long take, uh, but to study the possibilities of us having something in place to transport the people uh, from and to uh, Mestalla. So that's the third innovation vertical. And the fourth innovation vertical, it's fan engagement. So fan engagement represents everything related to the new behavior of, of consuming uh, that the Gen Z, for example, the new generation has. Uh, so we everything related to social media, uh, mental reality, virtual reality, uh, CRM, um, I don't know, everything related to how to entertain the people. And I mean the people, the 14 year olds that spend five seconds just watching pictures and just swiping around uh, Instagram, TikTok, they just have a really short span of attention, like nine second span. And you have to feed them content. They, are, they, just, they, they, they just consume content thousands of hours every, every, every year. So, so we basically need to know those people and the same product, the same match does not have to be offered in the same way to an 80 year old. Uh, as to a 14 year old. Uh, if that's the case, we might miss a great opportunity and maybe we can find lots of uh, 14 year olds preferring esports rather than the real sport. So those are the four verticals and that is what uh, Startup Valencia is helping us define. No more startups and create the program. Depending on, on, on how we define innovation, there's, there's companies that, that innovate in the sense of trying to make uh, their their brand, their club, their stadium green, for example, that's a way of innovating. Uh, I've seen some recent uh, recent projects in terms of innovation that are uh, green innovation, sustainability, and so on that are quite nice. I saw something from Betis recently. Uh, in terms of of uh, technology, I have to say uh, I've seen some some really nice example. I'm I'm just saying in Spain because that's the market I, I know more. But I have to say in Spain, for example, technology Real Sociedad has done really nice things um, in, the, in, in, in the present. In terms of, of fan engagement, for example, I have to say uh, um, there's, there's many different cases and that you can speak of in Spain. Of course, you've got Madrid and Barcelona, which they've got huge amounts of, of engagement from the fans. But to me, for example, fan engagement is done amazingly good by, by Borussia Dortmund and that I went a little bit out of Spain. I don't know, there's, there's, there's many examples. Uh, Roma, I also like very much how they do their social, um, the, the social cases. I think there's, there's many, many clubs that showcase some, some things and I think the clubs are changing a lot. Of course, there's many teams in USA which have been doing this uh, since a long time and in terms of fan engagement, in terms of match day experience, USA, I believe, NBA, NFL, uh, MLB, NHL are the markets we usually look at and try to imitate in a sense. Of course, we have different behavior here in Spain, but um, those are the ones we usually, we usually look. We even went, a uh, set of people we went a couple of years ago to study the best stadium experiences in, in USA, going to one of the biggest stadiums like Liberty Stadium or Dallas Cowboys Stadiums or uh, Atlanta Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And we try and learn a lot about, about how USA focuses everything around the match day experience. There's many, many different examples of clubs doing uh, a really nice job, um, but some of them are innovating in one sense, some others are doing in other sense. But I believe everyone has understood by now that doing the same things that we did 20 years ago is no longer valid. Because of COVID, all those assets, we were not able to deliver to them. So uh, the brand started thinking, hey, maybe I have to look at other type of assets. Uh, like digital assets, like for example, things like fan base or mailing or learning more about the customers that you have, if those are in, or, or of any interest from me or um, having a space in the web, having a special place on the, on the app or so, right? So there's also a shift happening in sponsorship and they believe we will see a, a, a bigger push from the companies in terms, uh, in terms of digital assets. So that means that those brands, those clubs that did not have a digital ecosystem, a mature digital ecosystem, 
are now going to suffer a lot more because now you're i now have conversation with brands that they speak about fan base they want to know uh how much how many people do you have uh in our fan base in terms of digitally speaking uh they want to see different types of of combinations of boys girls uh, age uh, type of phones activity we speak about clicks per rate we speak about retention we speak about other stuff that uh in the past was not even relevant to them and now since they only have that they have to lean towards that sense but they have found out that that is even more um more promising and more powerful than the than the physical assets having a billboard in the stadium you never know how many people saw that or how many people care about that or how many people reacted and bought one of your product because of that the thing about uh internet is that, and digital is that it gives you the ability to track every single thing that's happening so you might know that you send the mailing to the people you know how many people open the mail how many people click the mail how many people bought the product once they went to the web page and that basically lets you know oh this is effective or this is not you basically can measure the roi and let the company say it's because of this because the social media post now you have an engagement or 2 million euros like 7 million people watching a post it's not the same as you having a billboard but for some reason people prefer having a physical billboard in the stadium uh some one that you cannot even see on the tv for example rather than having a social media post reaching 7 million people and the reason is that in the past the companies were not that interested in digital assets but now they don't have any other thing because people are not coming to the stadium so they only have the digital and that's changing and the marketing agencies and the marketing people from the companies which some of them were kind of legacy let's say are starting to uh, accelerate and get new digital skills well our vision is to continue innovating we we have these four lines of work where we want to push forward we want to learn a lot innovation i think uh us uh betting on the the startups uh, it's a way of learning both of us so they will learn how uh business works and we will learn how startups work so we will try and get more agile we will try and get more digital mindset we will try and get new skills and we will try and improve a lot more in 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 that specific so i'd say in the next four to five years i hope we consolidate our our model of innovation we hope to have, I don't know, eight, 10, 12 startups every year, which that will mean in five years from now, around 40, 50 of them. Uh, we, will have, we, we hope to have lots of big products with us and uh, basically improving the life of many, many fans, getting to know many more fans around the world, uh, being able to expand internationally and, and make Valencia fans out of Valencia and uh, for those Valencia fans that we have from Valencia, keeping them really close and, and making uh, their life much easier and, and worth it.